Hey guys, welcome back. It is time once again for the Prepper Gearbox May review and demonstration. Now we got some cool stuff this time. We got these uh, Thompson survival snares. I've already opened this one up. You got two snares in here and they give you an extra one to practice with. I'll show you how to set those up. I did do some fur trapping a couple years back. We got the new Millennium Energy Bars here. These are 400 calories each. Both of these are orange flavor. I do like the flavor orange, so we'll be trying those out. We got these gigantic UCO Titan stormproof matches. These things are the size of little tiny road flares. I mean, look at that. That is huge. So we're going to try those out. We got some cotton up in the top there to help us out too. Uh, I got no doubts that these are going to do good. I've tried UCO brand before. They do really well. We have a Shimag. This is made by Rothko. Most people who have been over to the Middle East recognize the utility in one of these, especially in a hot and dusty environment. <laughs> Uh, we have an extra in here. This is the Luminade uh, Pack Light 12. This is a packable inflatable solar powered lantern. Now this requires about seven hours to fully charge. It's kind of cloudy out here today, but hopefully we got enough sun to try this out. And also the skill card we got surviving with a Shimag. <laughs> now a lot of people have trouble pronouncing that word Shimag. Uh, they'll pronounce it Shimaug, Shamwow. You're following me, camera guy. <laughs> but they are helpful, so we're going to try that out. We're going to try out these snares. We're going to see how these energy bars taste. I'm interested about these. Try out these matches, and we'll see how everything goes. Stay tuned. All right, we're going to start out slow. We're going to start with these new Millennium energy bars. Now, I thought both of these were orange, because both of them look orange, right? Actually, one is orange and one is apricot. So. We're going to start out with the apricot one because I do like apricot. Alright, let's see what we got here. They're packaged very well. These are supposed to be non-thirst inducing, which is good because I didn't bring anything to drink out here. This is what you get. It uh, looks kind of like pie crust. The texture is kind of like pie crust. Alright, I'm going to save the rest of this for later. <laughs> um, overall, my initial impressions, it does taste pretty good. It does have an apricot flavor to it. The texture is a little bit like pie crust. Uh, it is non-thirst inducing, although I do wish that I had something to wash it down with. I don't feel like I'm going to choke if I don't. Uh, so that's right on the money there. <laughs> uh, I just noticed this has an incredibly long uh, storage life. This thing doesn't expire until 2021. So that's freaking amazing. You got 400 calories and 160 fat calories. So this is going to give you some really good energy. This is probably a fantastic backpacking food. I mean, you see it's not much larger than, say, a Snickers bar. It's pretty dense, but it's not all that heavy. So I can foresee myself ordering some more of these. So. Overall, thumbs up. Like All right, it. let's talk a little bit about these Thompson Survival Snares. Now, they give you one to play around with here. And in the package, you get one that's the same size. You get a smaller one. You get some trapping wire. This stuff is really important if you're going to snare. You get some literature. They tell you about the recommended sizes here and what they're good for. The smaller one for rabbits, birds and similar sized animals, and the larger one for muskrat, mink, rabbits, skunk, and similar sized animals. So the small one, say rabbits and squirrels, and the larger one, maybe up to raccoon, possum, stuff like that. Now snares are pretty cool. They're very lightweight. They're easy to use. They're actually pretty easy to make yourself if you are so inclined. The downside is they're illegal in a lot of areas. And also right now, uh, even though I do have a trapping license, uh, 
there's nothing in season that I can trap with these. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to show you guys how to set these up. Alright, so a lot of people ask questions about how to use the tree lock slash swivel. Now these are actually pretty easy to use and there's a couple different ways that you can use them. Now one way that a lot of people use these is they'll actually take trapping wire and just tie it to the end of the swivel and the other end of the trapping wire they'll attach to what they want to anchor their snare to, in this case a, a fence post. There's an easier way to do that. You'll notice if I pass this wire through here, I've got a crimped end, a wire stop there, and then I've got this washer. And what you can do is take the washer and that wire stop, pass it around the tree or fence post or whatever you want to anchor that to, pass it back through the larger end of the tree stop, or the tree lock, get it up in this notch here, pull it all the way to the end, and then just tighten it down. And that'll lock it in place. And there you go. Alright guys, I'm going to show how to set one of these up out in the open so hopefully you can see it a little bit better. And then we'll show some better areas. Now I've made this kind of mock trail right here to show how this would work. So the first thing, we found a narrow spot in the trail. Or at least we're going to say this is narrow because I'm blocking one end and we've got this tree on the other end with the main body of the trail running right along through here. So this is going to be a good spot to set up. Now I'm going to use this tree as my anchor for the snare. So again, I'm just going to pass this in with the washer around the base of the tree. And I'm going to lock that in place. Right there. Tighten it up. Okay. So now that's attached to the tree. And we're going to say, we're going to snare a possum. So we're going to go just a little bit larger loop than we would use for a rabbit. Now for a rabbit, normally I like the loop maybe about as big around as the palm of my hand. We're going to go a little bit bigger than that. Maybe to my knuckles. Maybe about a five or six inch loop. Okay. We're going to adjust this. Right there. This is all kind of subjective how you want to set this up. Remember, this is just wire. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Just find where it wants to lay at. Okay, so we want that right about there. Now, we've got this other washer here. Now we can use this as a support to hold this up. And I'm going to use trapping wire for that. Now we have some trapping wire that this came with. So I'm going to pull off a section of that. Maybe about 20 inches. I'll cut that. There we go. And whenever you cut wire, always be careful and always roll the end. That's because this wire is real springy. You don't want to catch the end of that wire in an eyeball or something. I've caught one in the nose one time and it wasn't pretty. Alright. So now what we do to make a support, we're going to come off of this tree. So I'm just going to wrap this around here a couple times. Now if you were actually doing some serious modern trapping here, you would be wearing rubber gloves and rubber boots and really concerned about your scent. But since this is just a demonstration, we're not going to do that. Alright, so now we've got this end attached to the tree. I'm just going to find where we need to set this at. Right about there looks good. Okay, so I'll back my extra through here. Just wrap it around a couple times. There's no right or wrong way how to do this. We're just wrapping wire. Okay, right about there looks good. And we'll just make basically a little hanger and we're going to attach it to that extra washer. We're going to set this up to make the animal want to come through here. Camouflage this a little bit. 
to go. can take other sticks and things and kind of push them around to guide their head through the center of the loop. Okay, well that's a little bit high up off the ground, but for demonstration, it should work. There we go. Just about right. There. All right, so this is what we got here. We got our snare loop set up. We've got our tree lock set up right here, locked to the tree. We've got our trapping wire set right here, attached to the tree and coming down as a hanger to hang the snare where we want it so that the loop is in the proper position. Now, whenever the animal would go through here, that starts to tighten up on it. As soon as that starts to tighten up on it, they fight against it, and they get caught. Alright, so this is another good setup here. As you see, we've got our trail running right through here, and we've got this log that has fallen down over the trail. Now, we've got our snare loop set up, maybe about four inches up off of the ground right here. We've got probably about a five inch loop right here. Now this is supported up here with some trapping wire and it's just locked with the tree lock right around this log. Now we've set some sticks up here to keep the animal from wanting to go through that. They want to go right through the trail. When they do, the snare closes up around them and you catch your animal. So there you go. All right, so we're going to talk just a little bit more about the function of these snares. You might hear people talking about loading a snare. Now what that is, is when you first get a snare, the loop is going to be kind of teardrop in shape. Now that's okay, but it's not very fast acting. So what you want to do is just bend the top, oh, third of the snare. Bend it around your finger, just kind of pull it. This makes it a little bit more round, and right here on the underside of that lock, you want to bend that back up towards the tree end, if you can. And what this does is it makes your loop more round, see? And it makes the snare more fast acting, so that, that lock just jumps down right where it's supposed to be. Now, uh, you can use it in the teardrop fashion, like so, but it requires a lot more pressure to get that to close. And you want every chance for success if you're trapping for survival. So, load your snares, and you shouldn't have any big problems catching anything. Now, one more thing about these. As far as camouflaging these, you can use what's called a logwood die. I always used a walnut die. And I would show you how to do that, but it's the wrong time of the year to collect walnuts. <laughs> uh, I would cl collect walnut hulls, right, the shells, and put them in a big bucket. And you can let them seep there, or you can boil them. And it gets that black walnut dye out of it. And then you boil one of these along with it, and it turns this a darker color. You can also just spray paint these. But if you're going to spray paint your snares, just be aware that leaves an odor on the snare and that odor could alert the animal that something is not natural and they may avoid your snares until that smell goes away. Now you don't want to spray paint one black because black actually stands out in nature so you want to stick with something like a green or a brown or just some other neutral color. Alright, so there you go. As far as getting scent off of these, normally I would boil these in water with a little bit of baking soda uh, it doesn't take much baking soda, and then after you get done, that should take all the scent off of it, the human scent. 
and I would just set them up on a well, fence row or something like this and hose them off to get that little bit of uh, baking soda Next off. Next up these. I'm going to talk about these UCO Titan stormproof matches. They come in this waterproof container. We've got some uh, cotton balls up on the top there to help you out. It looks like we've got an extra striker down in here. If I can reach it. Yep. We've got an extra striking surface. And these matches are huge. <laughs> these are the largest matches I've ever seen. So, let's try these out. Woo! Yeah, don't do this inside. Holy smokes. <laughs> That's impressive. That is really impressive. It's still going. Wow. <laughs> Nice. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about is this Shimog here. It's been a long time since I tied one of these, but anyways, here you go. You fold it into a triangle, like so. Take my hat off so you can see my messed up hair. Now, pass it over your head, like so. Get the two ends down in front of you. Now you want to make one end longer than the other, significantly longer. So I like to take one end out as far as I can reach, and the other end maybe just a little bit lower than armpit length. And there's no real right or wrong way to do this. This is all personal preference, and it helps to do it in front of a mirror if you can. Now what I like to do is right around my forehead here, I like to make two little folds right here, little wings, and it'll keep it kind of tight against my forehead, and fold it down like that. Take the short end, and pass it under your chin, back up towards your ear, take the long end and pass it over your nose and mouth and around your head, like so, just like that. Bring it around to the short end and tie it. And it's going to tie right about behind your ear Then you gotta adjust it. Just fogging up my glasses pretty bad. There you go. And you can still wear your hat. <laughs> but in this way, your face is protected from the sun, your ears, your neck, everything is protected from dust. So. If you get tired of it, you just pull the face piece down. If you get tired of wearing this around your head, just pass it down. And you can wear it like a neck wrap. So, there you go. Handy piece of gear to have with you. And as our...
skill card. Talks about here. There's a lot of different things that you can use these for. Dust protection, sun protection, of course, those are pretty obvious. Uh, keeping cool, we just talked about that. An improvised water collector. Now, you know, there's a lot of dew out in the mornings. So you can wrap this around a tree. Tree limb, have one tag end coming down. Set that in your water bottle or canteen. The water will drip down into that. Uh, you can use it as a towel. Of course, everybody knows the benefits of carrying a towel with you, especially if you're into the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> now, it says you can use it as a weapon by putting, twisting a rock or something heavy in here and using it kind of like a flail. I don't know how well that would actually work. Now, you can use it as a bag. Now, this is a handy point. Just like with any other neckerchief, you can put stuff in here tie up the corners and use it like a bag. You could also use it like a hobo bag on the end of a stick if you wanted to. <laughs> you can just tie it to a stick and throw it over your shoulder. Or what you can do is use it kind of like an arm sling. Like this. Just tie kind of a square knot in here. Like that. Run this around, and now you've got a cool spot where if you break your arm, of course, you can use it as a sling, like so, or if I wanted to carry my stuff, just stick it down in there, and it makes a nice little improvised pouch. So there you go. What else does it say? Okay, arm sling, we already talked about that. Emergency bandage, pretty obvious. Pillow, okay, it says that you can stuff it with leaves and make kind of a pillow out of it. Water filter, yeah. Take a couple layers of this, stretch it over the mouth of your canteen, dunk it down in water. It'll help filter out particulate matter. Uh, signal flag, wave it to get someone's attention or just hang it from a tree. This is olive drab. I don't think it would gain a, a whole lot of attention, <laughs> out in the woods at least. Uh, pot holder, wrap it around your hand and take a pot of boiling water off the fire. Yeah, so you can use it kind of like as a glove. A tourniquet to help stop serious bleeding. Yeah, it would work pretty good for that. And as an ankle wrap. Yeah. So, awesome. Yeah. And it also talks about how to tie one on the front. That's pretty cool. <laughs> this is the Luminade packable lantern here. It's inflatable. And it looks like we had 10,000 hours of total life. Uh, 45 lumens on extra bright. We have, it says 12 hours battery life on low light setting. It is waterproof. And it floats. Cool. And we got 1.5 years of storage life before needing a recharge. So that's kind of cool. Alright, so this is sort of an extra. This uh, was not in any of the literature that came with the box. So as you saw, we got a couple different modes on here. We got, it appears to be very bright. Not so very bright. Very, very dim, blinky, and off. All right. Pretty neat. Very lightweight, and it's got this solar panel on it to charge it up. It takes about seven hours to get a full charge. Close it down, it looks like you just twist it. go.
there it is. All right, guys, it is now time for the final review. Starting out with the Thompson Survival Snares. Now, I like these. They give you enough to get started with. You got three of them in the box. Two of them come in the package. You get two different size snares. Um, they're not slathered in oil like a lot of them are whenever you get them. Um, and they give you the trapping wire, which is a, a pretty important piece of the kit, and a lot of people forget that whenever they get started out because they don't know how important it is until they actually get out and start trapping. Uh, snares are really good for survival because they're so lightweight. They're easy to carry. They're easy to maintain. They're easy to set. They're very fast to set. Remember, in a survival situation, you're already out of time. <laughs> so you want to do things as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And trapping is much more efficient than hunting in a real survival situation. You can set your traps up and then go off and do something more important, like working on your shelter, or working on a fire, something like that and your traps are out there trying to hunt for you while you're doing other things. So, it's a great thing to have with you. Um, if you're going to seriously trap, I recommend getting at least a dozen snares. Uh, back when I used to trap, if I had 12 really well-placed traps, I was pretty much guaranteed to regularly uh, get something in at least one of the traps. Just having one or two out, normally, you're not going to get a whole lot of success with that. And typically, it takes a couple days for the, the traps to actually work. You don't get a lot of hits on your first night. Um, depending on how small an animal you're going for, if you're going for like mice, squirrels, things like that, you're going to have a lot more success than if you're going for bigger stuff like coyote that are kind of difficult to trap. So, the Thompson Survival Snares. It says, these snares have been standbys and survival kits for decades. We've also included an extra snare, thank you, uh, with instructions so you can practice without having to use up your kit. I pulled all mine out anyway just to show you guys what's in there. Retail price, $16. Thumbs up. Next up, the New Millennium Energy Bars. Now, it had a consistency kind of like pie crust. It was not unpleasant. Uh, I did like it. It did taste how it was supposed to taste. <laughs> it tasted just like apricot. Um, as far as being not thirst provoking, yeah I would say it's not thirst provoking. So you get 400 calories. That's nothing to sneeze at guys, especially for something that size. That is pretty amazing. I'm gonna have to order some more of those. Uh, and it says here, assorted flavors, each 400 calorie bar is high in energy and not thirst prov provoking. Just a thing to munch on while waiting for a critter to wander into your snare. Retail price, $3. And I give that a thumbs up. Next up, UCO Titan Stormproof Match Kit with Case. It says, light just one of these and you'll know why we added them to this box. They even stay lit underwater and in high winds. And we just proved, yes, they do stay lit underwater. I dunked that in water three times and it still lit right back up. It says we do, however, recommend not lighting them indoors. And you can see why. Those things are like road flares. Oh, man. <laughs> so those are definitely going to go right in my kit. Those are pretty amazing. Retail price, $9. I say worth every penny for a survival kit. Thumbs up. Next up, the Shimog Tactical Scarf. Versatile and even a bit fashionable if you're a hipster. A Shimog is a great complement to every kit. Retail price, $11. These are pretty handy. You can do a lot with them. Uh, it's very similar. It kind of reminds me of, like I may have said before, kind of the bandanas that they wore in the Old West. You can use them for that. You can cover your head with them. And even the mountain men, you know, back before pockets were popular, People would just wear a belt, and it was usually nothing more than a sash, very similar to this, and you would stick your knife and your tomahawk and anything else that you needed to carry with you on that belt, and it was handy. So there's not a whole lot that you can't do with a shamak. Very handy piece of gear. This particular one is made by Rothko. They are a little bit smaller than the traditional shamogs, which were normally if I remember correctly, 44 inches squared. I think this one is 42 inches. 
Um, retail price $11. Thumbs up. It worked really well. And the skill card, surviving with a shimag. It says a shimag isn't just a cool looking headscarf, but has many other potential life saving uses. Retail price, priceless. Alright, so yeah, there's uh, again, this is one of those things that's just so versatile, you can't really go over everything, but. Anyways, guys, that is all the time I have for today. Um, we also had this little extra in there, this really cool lantern. You guys know that I'm a, a lantern buff. I really like stuff like this. This is going to get a lot of use, okay? <laughs> Very lightweight. You can just attach that to your pack, let it charge on its own while you're hiking around. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and until next time, thumbs up.